Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Citra 3DS emulator on your Mac. So this allows you to play Nintendo 3DS games. Now, a couple of things I want to get clear. One, this video is not condoning piracy. This is for educational purposes only. So again, for legal reasons, you should always own the game. Any you know, BIOS or key files that you put in there, you should always you know get them from the console yourself, etc. Et Where you get them from, Google them yeah, and you can find them. That's totally up to you, but I just want to, you know, put that out there. The other thing I want to put out there is, you, you know, some, you know, viewers might know that Citra is they would what what they would call is a dead emulator. I'll, you know, put that out there, uh, you know, just so you know, it's not actively supported anymore directly because there was, you know, up like a separate video, but there was a low issue with Nintendo. It got taken down. We can still download it. It's considered to be the most complete 3DS emulator works very well with the vast majority of games there have been some forks from you know citra 3ds like i think lime 3ds as well which i'll be covering on citra as well and they have videos of them but again the purpose of the sonar system youtube channel is to make sure you have everything covered if you want to use citra 3ds again that is probably again the most comp comprehensive one you know here's the video for you so let's get it set up Pretty simple to get, you know, set up. First of all, you want to download Citra. So if you just Google Citra 3DS, I'll provide links in the description for everything, you know, that I'm showing. Let's go to the website, go to download, scroll down, click Mac. It will download a file or no, it will soon scroll down. Make sure you have the download, the latest Citra for Mac. Click download. I see this release date was, you know, recent uh i feel like you might have actually you know come back the, uh, so this is the citra you know version and then you have the old you know versions as well but again let me show you right now so okay yeah i've already i already had it downloaded so i can close that down i'll open up open up my finder then if i go to downloads and actually one other thing I want to show you is depending on where you get your games from, they might be in certain, you know, they might be compressed like a zip file. A zip file you can just extract on a Mac just by double clicking it. Certain files like maybe a 7-zip, like a .7z or .raw file, you need some, some extra tool. I recommend the Unarchiver. You can get it from the App Store. Search for Unarchiver. The Unarchiver is free. Download that in case you need it. Again, you'll just be double clicking it as well. Again, that's just something I wanted to let you know. And now if we go to Citra, just double click it. This just uses the built-in, uh, you know, archive utility because this is a basic, you know, dust seven z. No, no, it's seven z file. So we will be using the uh, third party. Okay, so Citra Qt. That's what you want to be using. You literally just drag that onto applications. There we go. We can delete these original files now. And also, I have my game right here. It's new super. Mario Brothers, it was in zip file. You double click it and you unzip the .3ds file that you want. So this is decrypted. If you have encrypted games, you will need AES underscore keys.txt. For legal reasons, I can't show you, you know, getting that, you know, like a link, for example. But honestly, if you Google it, you will get it. You will find it. If you have any you know, questions, feel free to, you know, comment as well. And, you know, I'll show you how to install this particular set of keys it's pretty easy to be honest so what you want to do is go to applications and now open up citra you can open it from the search over here if you double click citra you'll get this it can't be open because apple cannot check it for malicious software that's simple to solve you go to the apple icon system settings then you go to privacy and security Again, depending on what version of Mac you're using, it might not appear like this. Just search for it. And then you scroll down and you just say Citra QT will block. Click open anyway. It'll ask you for your password. I'll use Touch ID. This pops up. Again, this is just the first time. Click open. Done. It is now open. So first of all, 
I'm going to show you how, where to put the AES underscore keys.txt. If you have a decrypted file like I do, like you, if you get hold of them, you know, you're fine. You don't have an issue. Yeah, if you do have some encrypted files, you just need to get the AES keys. Go to File, Open Citra Folder, go to Sys Data. You want to copy it into there. So go to my downloads, right click, copy. paste boom done that's it so that's the aes keys instead again i won't need it because i'm using decrypted roms but again just something i wanted to mention now how do you add the game folder you just double click to add the game folder what i recommend is for the game don't just add this particular folder i recommend you get this copy this somewhere where it's a bit more permanent you could be an external drive if you know you want to save some storage or it could be somewhere let's say in documents so let's say if i create a file folder called roms in there i like to you know manage everything 3ds paste it into there there we go and now i can add the folder by double clicking so documents roms 3ds open the game now appears there now before we run this you know uh, you can right click and get some settings as well but, but before we do i'm going to show you the settings in citra go to citra preferences honestly most of this you can leave you know default you don't need to mess around with um, like emulation speed like do you really want to be increasing the emulation speed maybe with certain parts of the game possibly maybe at some point but you can do for region auto select is fine the rest of it again if you want to mute audio when in background that's pretty cool pause emulation when in background that's also really cool as well uh, again that's a you know personal prefer you know preference next you go into system make sure enable new 3ds mode is selected and you know the rest of it you can change the clocks that we can leave that enable 3gs you know plugin loader this is the, like a you know like a plugin loader that was added for you know emulation that allows you to inject actual code into the game itself you know for mods if you if this is where you would you know be dealing with that uh, saying missing the keys and i think that's just because i haven't i already have citra open weird let me just oops i don't doesn't even look well i've added the keys here anyway so that's you know weird way it's saying that we can ignore that and then you can you know select the camera front or rear you know image source as well you can do the system camera or you can put a still image if you want to put on there storage leave that as it is for graphics this is where it gets pretty interesting for internal resolution that's just a default one you can increase it my recommendation is always this you'll see a lot of youtube that say you know go to you know six x go to 10x it depends on your computer it depends on what you're playing or if you can handle it or not 3ds is not that intensive don't get me wrong but you know your system still might not be able to handle it so get it working on native once you're happy that it works there it's all working fine slowly increase it and, and and go from there because a lot of people say oh you know select the one that matches your native resolution but if your system can't handle it then what so again that's just my recommendation post processing shader can leave the leave all that stereoscopy 3d mode if you want to add that feel free to but i'm going to leave it and uh, screen layout so as you know ds and 3ds so this is 3ds emulator is a dual screen device so single screen will show you the top screen large screen will show you you know default will be like one top one bottom you know same size uh you know you know for the most part because the the there's a slight difference in size but it's in terms of the overall size you know they're very similar and then you know you have large screen you have side by side if you want to do that separate windows hybrid screen so you know feel free to check that out you can change that in game so you can test that out as well you can swap it as well and now now if we go to audio for the audio you can leave most of this as default just one thing to bear in graphics i want to show you one other thing in advanced make sure for the graphics api you've got something other than software selected if for some reason the only software is there that's what you have to use but you should have vulcan or OpenGL. if you have vulcan because you have a new system select vulcan vulcan has much better performance 
from here again, most of you can leave as default or just do what or do what's on my system, which is the default ones. But in case it's not, this is the optimized ones. Make sure this is the one main thing. Enable shader G J I T, which is just in time, you know, compilation is enabled and you know it basically improves performance. In audio, the only one thing I really or two things I want to say for the output type, make sure something selected like auto is fine. I've had it sometimes when uh, I've had an emulator by default, none is selected. Um, and for the output device, you can set a specific device, auto just sets it to the you know the default system one. And the input type again have something selected for the input type you can actually you know for the you know for the mic use your mic as well which is really cool and then for controls you can now map your controls it's really simple press on a button press something like y it's now mapped you can set the analog stick i'll have a separate video covering how to set up your ps4 your xbox and maybe even like a switch controller to your mac for this emulator as well so feel free to check that out and that's pretty much it. obviously you can just slowly go around you know modifying the key and then restore it you can also add a new profile so if you click new name the profile so you can have different profiles for like different users maybe different games for example and click ok and now there's a few more you know things that you can load the file this specifically by prefer a game directory where all your games are and you can install a cia file if you have one of them you can um what else do, do, do. For emulation, you can load and save state. There's no states right now. The game not loaded, but I'll show you that. And in the view, this is where you can change the, you know, the layout of the screens. And that's pretty much it. The main thing that you want to do. For the game, if you right click it, you can obviously open the location, for example, and install it. But if you go to properties, you can literally do what you were doing in settings, but game specific. So if you feel like okay, this game, it can run six times great but then if there's other games they only run up to four times on your system you can just have the settings for that particular game as well the rest of the you know is just use global configuration but it means you can actually have it tailored for each game the last thing i want to show you is cheats so if you have some cheats you can just click you can you know click add you can name it and they can put the code as well and put some notes if you want to put in there and you can enable those cheats again i'm not gonna put any cheats on there because i'm not a cheater uh, point intended and then click ok and pretty much yeah you can have multiple game directories as well you can change it from vulcan to software here as well you can't change it in game even though they appear there they'll be you know locked out and you can change the volume here as well and now we're good to go we can literally double click it and load our game usually doesn't take long to load the game i find because it's you know only a portable system 3ds not something like ps3 <laughs> and if i increase the volume we have game sound as well This is where I'll probably want to increase the speed as well. <laughs> I was just talking about not increasing speed. That's probably where I would want to do it. <laughs> but the game's almost loaded now. But as you can see, it's fully working. I'll just show you a bit of gameplay. And then I'll show you the load and save states as well. So I've just got my keyboard set up, you know, right now, but you can connect an external controller, but you do have keyboard support as well. And it's at this point, you can say, okay, you know, the game's running well, it's good frames per second. Should I increase the resolution? And yes, you can, you can, you know, go ahead and do that. Go to you know, preferences, Go to graphics and put it. Let's put it at 10x. See how well that works. Yeah, 
You see, that looks a lot. Mario looks a lot sharper. Because if I was to go to view, screen layout, here's, you know, the different screen layouts as well. You will want the small screen, the bottom screen as well. So for that reason, I do recommend you know, having it. Again, a separate window, definitely not a fan of that one. Unless you have, let's say, multiple screens, then it could be useful. Um, but I'd just do default. That's my go-to one. And the last thing I'm going to do is show you load and save states. So you can pause, stop, restart here. And again, configure current game as well. So the, one of the beauties of emulators is you have save states. And what that allows you to do is this. If you go to save state, go to slot one. That's saved. And I'm going to stop this. I'm going to launch it up. As you can see, it's launched it off from the start. If I go to emulation, load state, slot one. it goes directly to that point in game. So, you know, the main advantage is you're not without, there's two main advantages. One, you're not reliant on the built-in save system in the game and you don't know where that's gonna allow you to save it. Two, even to access the built-in save system in a game, you have to go through all the intro of the console on the game. That can take a few seconds, maybe even a 30, even a minute or so. And this way you just directly load it and it's a matter of seconds. And that's it. So that's how you set up the Citra emulator on your Mac to play 3DS game. If you have any questions about, you know, the ROM files, AES key files, feel free to, you know, ask. If you have any, you know, questions around the emulator or anything else, you know, I'll do my best to support you. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.